Hi all, I have another amazing game to show you from David Grovener against the mighty Stockfish 10. This is Leela ID 11248, one of the best IDs ever of Leela Chess. The time control is fast and furious, 40 moves per two minutes with a two second increment per move. The opening book, E4, Knight F6, the Alakine's Defense, and the Scandinavian variation, so this early Knight C3, which actually was a move played by Alakine as white against uh, the Alakine's Defense. So this is the Scandinavian, it has that Scandinavian defense move. E5, we have here D4, Knight C, E2, and here Knight G4, and this is the end of the book. Another popular move in this position is Knight E4, and best, it seems, white actually can, it seems, get an advantage with c3. For example, knight c6, knight takes d4, and this looks weird, but check is the key thing. And white ends up with a nice pawn center here. So this, this line actually is very, very handy to know if you're going to play the knight c3 against the alakine. d3, just play the check and pick up this knight with a big advantage. Uh, so D takes, again, it's a nice advantage here, so it's really worth knowing about this with a nice big pawn center. So very, very nice line, actually, for knight e4. But knight g4 in this game, which hits the e5 pawn, that's protected. And now c5, quite often in this position, h5 has been played. For example, this, c5 now, g6, black reinforces uh the f5 square here. White well, should have a small edge though. So anyway, c5 was chosen by Stockfish. 10, knight g3, knight c6, bishop c4, the knight goes back to h6, knight f3, e6. a4, this is a very, very important bishop, it seems. Especially at the moment, this bishop's hemmed in, the counterpart um, bishop. But how can this diagonal be unblunted later that's interesting because there could be some targets like f7 of great interest bishop e7 d3 knight f5 and now Leela just castles not minding the doubled pawns knight takes h takes bishop d7 and now c3 d takes b takes knight a5 and the bishop goes to a2 queen c7 now, a very, very interesting move indeed. F5, trying to really liberate this bishop at the cost of a pawn. But also, it's more than the bishop here. It's about these central pawns with d4, d5. Getting that blockader out of the way is a very interesting idea as well. E takes d4. So the lovely looking d5 with d6 looks awesome. Visually, <laughs> visually crushing. Uh, there might be a t-shirt about that soon. <laughs> Visually crushing. Okay, black castles, bishop f4, queen b6, rook b1, queen a6, rook e1. Look at this, those center pawns with d5. It looks good. It looks glorious. c4, d5. This pawn duo is very, very happy. Spearheading white's position. Rook f e8, d6, bishop d8, king h2. We have now queen c6. And now a very, very interesting move indeed, rook b5. This seems to be uh, a bit of a naughty rook because actually a5 is protected, so it's not really threatening a5. And surely when the queen moves, that rook's just going to be evicted. The queen moves, hitting the rook, and we're taught... To respond to the opponent's threats do we do that routinely or do we take a more dynamic perspective how can we take a more dynamic perspective once we see that there's a threat surely we move the rook here what about this now this is just an idea but what if we say well what are the ingredients of that threat what would be used in carrying out that threat would that weaken the opponent's position somewhere else for example using those ingredients is there a downside to using those ingredients of this threat that we're meant to respond to, that we're meant to sort of react like a Pavlovian dog to all these threats on the chessboard? Do we have to? Does Leela have to? What would you play here with white if you were Leela? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. 
Okay, Leela doesn't respond to the threat. She doesn't take orders necessarily to threats. Knight d4. Key consideration. Ingredients. Light square targets. Bishop would be without a counterpart if this bishop's used up. f5, f7, surely a bit weaker as well. These squares, by the way. Uh, so let's have a look. Stockfish doesn't take immediately. Bishop b6 is played instead. On bishop takes b5, what happens? Let's see. a takes, for example, bishop b6 here. Bishop b1, f5 target. It's been weakened because remember that bishop's just been used up. The ingredients has been used up. So f5, what to do about f5 here? Say g6, bang. Knight takes f5. d7, tactical. White's got a big advantage there as well. So knight takes f5, devastating. Actually, a, a subtle d7, not just about the uh, diagonal. So bishop b6 is played. It's too dangerous, it seems, to take immediately. We have bishop, sorry, we have queen h5. So looking at the light square, it's just ready for that ingredients to be used, the, the light square protector. Black refuses again to take immediately with knight b3, playing knight b3 instead. What happens here if this is taken? Bishop takes b5, a takes. For example, this, c takes. This position looks gorgeous with those three central pawns. Queen can drop back. And now look at this. The two bishops are kind of right behind this mass of pawns. They're like <laughs> the shepherd dogs <laughs> herding the sheep in the center. The two shepherd dogs. So queen e2, perhaps you could say that. e6, herding the two connected now past pawns in this position and now undermining really strongly on light squares is possible with g4. That loose, loose knight, if black's forced to counter sack, this is looking horrible. And g4 again, trying to blast through these light squares. This can end up with a very, very winning position for white if black's not careful. So bishop takes b5 does seem to have these kind of outcomes really horrible so knight b3 first that's taken now taking finally okay what's the penalty then bishop takes b3 immediately hitting f7 now now is there a move like g6 black actually played queen d7 you might be asking about g6 Probably best is actually to drop back the queen, take it relaxed, protect uh, the c3 pawn, uh, and then play a6. Well, this is a good continuation, for example, like this. This is a nice casual continuation because white's pawns in the center are not going anywhere. And this, this looks just horrible, this kind of situation. It looks absolutely devastating. The d pawn looks to be crashing through. It turns out even this, this line is promising, but this is deep stuff, and there might be. This is stockfish tendon analysis. There might be a flaw in this because initially it thinks it's not very good for white. But we take this really deep, this this king chase uh, here, just for those interested. If here, then there's like bishop h6. So let's have the king chase variation with the king going here. Check, check, takes. And this looks as though it's refuting white's attack. But bishop h6, queen c4. But now taking, and now a bishop sack. The pawns in the center are winning in this position. Even after black's a bishop up in this situation, the pawns just crash through. A recurring theme, it seems, of the variations of this game. So we have queen d7, protect f7. Bishop d5. And now the bishop is becoming a lighthouse in the center of the position, putting light on the light squares, so to speak. The big mighty lighthouse is not going anywhere. Rook a c8, c4. Cementing the lighthouse. Bishop d4, queen f3. Where is the queen going? Rook e2 now, stepping off the dark squares. The, the rook might be interested in rook a2 without the glare of black's bishop on d4. Bishop b6, queen c3, taking away d4 from the bishop. Now challenging that bishop, why does white want to do this? Take off the bishop, losing the bishop pair. Because queen a1, super powerful move with the idea of a battery alignment against a7 with the lighthouse looking at a8. So it's awkward. There's no rook c7. So this is very awkward for a7 in grave danger. 
is the trend here going to be very positive for white let's see rook f8 rook a3 queen d8 in fact here we see queen d4 not taking on a7 immediately queen d7 now bishop c6 queen d8 if black countersacks the exchange here it's not particularly pleasant after e6 for example uh, this is very very dangerous on that second rank for black for g7 so say f takes rook takes rook f7 and then white can take and then queen after d7 so we have queen d8 dropping the a7 pawn a queen comes out but it's the only piece out and about a little bit only on the fourth rank not even on the fifth though rook e7 we have queen g4 just offering the exchange of queens this is such a great position for white if h6 had been played white can afford to offer the exchange of queens and for example crash through like this if it's rejected with d7 and then looking at d8 from h4 means d8 is a big threat and actually here b6 black's totally overloaded and after bishop a4 move like bishop a4 it's looking uh, abysmal yeah it's looking as though things like bishop b3 as well if this bishops uh yeah the bishops attacking the queen say queen e2 then there's d8 it's it's just cracking black's position is cracking up so we have uh queen g4 queen takes f takes this is a really great position black's just not doing anything here the rooks are kind of stuck well it's got the liberating c5 potentially to create another pass pawn the king comes up the board stockfish is resorting to trying to create a pass pawn like this on the h file but the king comes up not too worried about that neglect going over here c5 playing that c5 break another pass pawn here beautiful pass pawn here a3 black crates its own pass pawn the rook comes back in time and now threatens to eliminate it but now with b6 yes you can guess what's happening now after king f5 king d5 and here d7 the king's making inroads again to support one of the major pass pawns check kicking the king back for a moment check rook h1 putting the king back in its box it's the leela's king that's going to be the aggressive one and this king's pacified rook d8 king c7 yep rook g8 there's constant threat of rook takes h7 potentially bishop f5 taking this pawn off leisurely and now rook takes h2 queening and this pawn yeah shedding material to stop that pawn is totally winning yep totally winning position now adjudicated here absolutely brilliant game i think the one key point about this game is responding to threats do we routinely respond to threats when we're in a great position we need to look at the ingredients behind those threats is there a downside using up those ingredients uh, so borrowing from peter to pay pay pool is an expression or something like that <laughs> so is black borrowing from light square protection to pay you know to win the exchange is there a downside of using the ingredients of a threat can we think more dynamically instead of being more instead of just being reactive to the opponent's threats so Leela did this brilliant positional exchange sacrifice the light square bishop truly celebrated to the maximum being on d5 like a lighthouse of the position looking at both sides of the board and then later just the exchange down but totally dominating the rooks winning a7 all the end game started to be winning a crushing game if you enjoyed this game video then please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member of chessbowl.net play against other youtubers you can also check your youtube analysis in advance or of this of these games from the improved menu learn from the masters youtube order button comments questions donations see the description like share subscribe hit that notification bell uh, and there's also a new teespring store check the description for form porn t-shirts etc all really appreciated Thanks very much.